My father said, in the, even in the movie, he says, here, it's a piece of music. It doesn't mean that's music. It's what you put into it. That's right. You have to play it. You have to play it and make it right and make it sing. Exactly. It doesn't mean it's going to be music until you do it. Billy Strange. I mean, another great guitar uh, He's player. got an interesting... And he didn't he uh, uh, write uh, Limbo Rock for Chubby Checker? Oh, I don't know. I don't know about that. Did he? Yeah, I think he did. Wow. And he uh, didn't he play the guitar on the Munsters TV show? Thing no, that was actually Jack Marshall. That was Jack Marshall that played that. Yeah. Because uh, Jack Marshall, I think, wrote that. Wow. Wow. Yeah. But he, was he considered one of the wrecking crew? You know, Jack, Jack would, well, and then, and who, again, yeah, yeah. who's going to be part of the wrecking crew? I don't know. Yeah, exactly. It could, um, but it could no, be Jack people, was right? one of the, you know, his son. Mm -hmm. um, his son, you know, uh, oh my God, I totally went blank. The great producer, Spielberg's producer, helped me out. Uh, oh, Frank Marshall. Frank Marshall. Frank Marshall was his son. And he said to me, he was telling me a story about his dad. They, you know, he had one of those, look again, one of those rock and roll horrible hits, you know, but it became a hit. So now he has to figure out, oh, great, I got to put a band together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he had his kid, Frank, and his friends put a band together, took him to Sacramento to go play in an uh, outside concert, and, and Jack's behind the screen playing the solo. Oh, wow. wow. You know, you know the old man out there, they sort of <laughs> just had these kids playing. I was like, oh, that's phenomenal. You know, that, but that's what it was. That's, there's so many different stories. Yeah. You can make multiple movies here for yeah. sure. Um, now, let's see, there's, there's also producers. Uh, producers Herb, Herb yeah. Alpert is in well, the Herb film. Well, you know, Herb uh, Alpert, you know, his, you know, obviously was an artist first. Yes, uh, you know, yes. And A&M Records and... Um, I have him in it and Lou Adler together. They yes. were, I didn't realize they were so close when I, until I started working with them. That they were close friends? Yeah, they yeah, were yeah. very close. They were actually, they were Janet Dean's first producer. Wow. I didn't know that. They learned from Sam Cooke. Wow. So he was talking about how Sam Cooke taught him everything. And Bums Blackwell and all these guys. Um, H.P. Barnum. H.P. Barnum, another phenomenal interview. And, then, and, and Snuff Garrett. Snuff Garrett. Uh, one of my favorite interviews, and Snuff just passed away two weeks ago. Yes, and we'll see a clip here yeah. in a second. But he was the kind of guy that was really about the business. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, um, Snuff came out of Dallas in radio, came out here, he got a job at Liberty Records, which was an amazing. They were doing a record a day at Liberty Records for weeks. Wow. A record a, a day. Record a, a day. day. So we so were talking Dana an Dean, album Vicky or Carr, a single? Album, or would, wow. you know, they could knock them out. Wow. That might have been singles, but it was like every day. Here's uh, Snuff in his own words talking oh, about there's nothing better his, than uh, his career as a producer in Hollywood. Yeah. I came to LA to work. I went from in a little town in Texas where I was making about $350 a week. It was a lot of money for a kid, you know? And I was making $350 a week, and I quit that and went to Liberty Records doing local promotion in LA for $90 a week. And uh, it took me about six months to talk him in and let me produce a record. So I guess I was such a lousy promotion man that they uh, decided to let him try this. If that don't work out, we can get rid of his ass. I get, I'm sure that was the thought. And uh, so I started out, sound worker taught me right. Uh, uh, started out, you know, cleaning up tapes and they had a big act in those days called Martin Denny. It was exotic sounds from Hawaii, piano player. And uh, so I'd put in the bird egg, the bird sounds and the cuckoos and all that stuff. Start out doing stuff like that. Because I didn't know one note from another. I don't know any music. And between country and pop, I had 50 top 10 records. And uh, I've always thought, boy, if I knew music, I could have really had a lot of hits, you know. But then I thought, if I knew music, I might not have had any hits either, you know. It's just a different way of hearing. I was always interested in the songs. Because so. I'm, I'm making a record, and what makes a record, just like it makes a film or a television show or anything else, is the script. And the, the song is, was always the most important thing to me. I think a song can be played badly, but if it's a good enough song, it can be a, can be a hit, you know. See, records were never ever in my lifetime ascetic to me I, I never I never thought that we were had a hammer and a chisel and I was chiseling anything in stone that was gonna laugh last for a billion years you know I was making records for people to buy and we'd like to sell them to you that's all I made records for if you like that hell buy it you know if you don't like it I'm not here to tell you that 
this is better than any damn Mario Alonzo record I ever heard uh, because it, it was I never went for the aesthetics of making records and a lot of people do and I respect them I listen to them and I enjoy them but that was not my way my way was to make records for people to listen to Interesting character. Oh my God, um, you know he was. Some people also think I we hung out and we knew everybody, you know, like all the musicians. I didn't know any of the musicians until I started. I mean, I knew their names, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I never met Don Randy. Maybe once or twice in my lifetime. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Carol, I don't think I ever met until we started filming. Uh, Snuff was the only guy I met because Dad didn't. They were f good friends and they were gamblers. Oh, really? <laughs> so if there was a card game, Snuff was there. Yeah, wow. wow. Uh, and they could gamble on, like he said, on anything. It, it could be a raindrop where it's going to hit. Wow. Um, but he was the opposite of, you know, an artistic producer. When I say artistic producer, who's like he said, I'm in a business. My job is to get in and get out and get ahead. So if, if there was any complaints about Snuff, it might have been, well, I could have done another take. I wish it would have, you know, Stuff says I, I got it. It's good, move on. And he had the best working for him. He had Ernie Freeman as the great arranger. Earl Palmer was doing a lot of his work. Dad was doing the 50 guitars of Tommy Garrett, which is right. the, yes. that, yeah. and that was my dad on the a guitar. Tommy yeah. Garrett, who is snuff, yeah, yeah. can't play a note. That's right, exactly. Yeah. That's right, that's so, why he mentioned that he really wasn't a musician. Yeah.